Good evening, and welcome to the April 13th work session of the Gaston County Board of Commissioners. My name is Tom Kigger. I serve as chairman of the board, as well as commissioner for the Gastonia Township. I'd like to welcome our viewers and thank Spectrum Cable and AT&T for making this possible for our citizens. For our television audience, I'd like to present your commissioners beginning on my far left. Surprise. <laughs> Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Ronnie Worley, South Point Township. That, that's a first. Thank you. Kim Johnson. Kim Johnson, Gastonia Township. Good evening, Chair Brown, Riverbend Township. Alan Fraley, Chairwell Township. And good evening, Bob Hovis, Crowders Mountain Township. Uh, the first item tonight are proclamations and commendations, and Commissioner Hovis is here to start us off with the first proclamation. Thank you. I'd ask uh, <clears throat> Chief Reed Rollins to please join me, and Chief Ramey, if he would, please. Oh, he's not going to be here. That's fine. Um, <clears throat> this is a proclamation in reference to April 11th through the 17th being declared as Animal Care and Enforcement Appreciation Week in Gaston County. Whereas the care and safety of our community pets and other animals is paramount, and whereas an animal in is in need, the prompt and caring response of dedicated animal care and enforcement personnel is vital. And whereas the safety of our pets is dependent upon the quality and professionalism of our personnel, who are often the first and most critical contact citizens to have, animal, to have with animal care and enforcement services. And whereas animal care and enforcement personnel provide our county with proper care, control, and treatment for lost pets and other animals in need, and animals presenting a risk to the community, and whereas our animal care and enforcement personnel have exhibited compassion, understanding, and professionalism during their performance of their job in the past year, now therefore it be resolved that the Gaston County Board of Commissioners proclaims April the 11th through the 17th, 2021, and it's Animal Care and Enforcement Appreciation Week in, the Gast <clears throat> in Gaston County in honor of the del diligent and professionalism animal care and enforcement personnel have demonstrated in the care and custody of our community's pets and other animals. This be adopted the 27th day of April, 2021. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and the Board of Commissioners for this recognition. I specifically want to recognize uh, Dr. Blankenship, Assistant Chief uh, Steve Jensen, Assistant Chief uh, Suzanne Mooney-Smith, and Captain Reed Rollins, and all of the staff for the hard work that they do day in and day out, taking care of the animals throughout Gaston County and responding to uh, animal care and enforcement calls uh, throughout each of the municipalities and the unincorporated areas of Gaston County, it's a tall order on a day-to-day -day basis. They do phenomenal work and we appreciate the recognition. In addition, uh, you were gracious enough to see that we could build a new shelter in the past uh, two years. And unfortunately due to COVID, we weren't able to celebrate that last April or May. So this Friday, we are doing a ribbon cutting of the new shelter and each of you are invited to that ceremony at 10 a.m. So thank you again for this recognition. Next is a proclamation to proclaim uh, the week of April 18th through the 24th as Volunteer Week in Gaston County. Is there anyone here to accept that? I don't think there is. I'm just going to read it from the podium. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Okay. And if there's anybody else that serves on any county appointed, uh, appointed boards or committees, feel free to join me at the podium. No one's coming up. Whereas the, the entire community can affect positive change with any volunteer action, no matter how big or how small, 
and whereas volunteers can connect with local community service opportunities through hundreds of community service organizations, and whereas millions of volunteers working in their communities utilize their time and talent daily to make a real difference in the lives of children, adults, and the senior population. And whereas during this week, all over the nation, service projects will be performed and volunteers recognized for their commitment to service. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Gaston County Board of Commissioners hereby proclaims April 18th through the 24th, 2021 is Volunteer Week and recognizes this year's theme, shining a light on the people and causes that inspire us to serve as an opportunity to encourage all citizens to volunteer on appointed boards and in their respective communities. Be it further resolved that the Gaston County Board of Commissioners join the nation and the state of North Carolina by recognizing all volunteers in the community for the many services they provide to the county commission and to all the citizens of Gaston County. And we will adopt this at our voting meeting on the 27th of April. Uh, next proclamation is to proclaim the month of April 2021 as Fair Housing Month, and I'd ask Christy Ferguson and any of her uh, guests to come on up. Christy's with the, uh, now are you president of the Realtors Association? Or? I'm the past president. Past president, okay. But I do have my friends that are here. Okay. Do you want to introduce everybody? Yeah, actually, uh, so my name is Christy Ferguson. My name is Christy Ferguson. I am chairperson of the diversity committee for the Gaston Association of Realtors and the immediate past president. I'd like to introduce our current president, Chip Wilson, and our CEO, Angela Burgess. Thank you. Well done. Whereas April 21, uh, excuse me, April 11th of 2021 marks the 53rd anniversary of the passage of the Fair Housing Act, which enunciates a national policy of fair housing for all who live in the United States. And whereas the Fair Housing Act prohibits discrimination based on race, creed, color, religion, sex, handicap, uh, family status, and national origin. And whereas fair housing is a positive community good. And whereas economic stability, community health, and human relations in all communities are improved by diversity and integration. Whereas fair housing is integral to the ethical commitment of members of the National Association of Realtors and the Gasson Association of Realtors, and is critical to the ability of all real estate professionals to serve their clients, customers, and the communities. And whereas acts of housing discrimination and barriers to weak, uh, equal housing are repugnant to a common sense of decency and fairness. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Gaston County Board of Commissioners hereby proclaims the month of April 2021 as Fair Housing Month, and this will be adopted the 27th of April at our voting meeting. And Chip, would you like to come up and say anything? <laughs> You can give us a blessing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate uh, your uh, this ordinance, and we certainly stand with you as the Association of Realtors to ensure that everyone has the uh, that their right to a safe, affordable house is preserved under the law and by, and in practice. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, folks. Thanks Thank for you. coming out. And uh, next is to recognize the retirement of uh, County Police Sergeant Christopher Lowrance. Whereas Police Sergeant Christopher B. Lowrance retired from the Gaston County Police Department on February 1 of this year after serving 29 years with Gaston County. And whereas Police Sergeant Lowrance has requested that he be awarded the service sidearm Heckler & Koch Model 45 serial number HKU-023692 
and the badge worn during his service with the Gaston County Police Department pursuant to General Statute 20-187.2 and Board Resolution Number 259 dated October 27, 1983. Now therefore, be it resolved that the Gaston County Commissioners one, the badge worn by Sergeant Lawrence and his service sidearm, Heckler and Koch Model 45, be declared surplus equipment. The badge worn by Sergeant Lawrence be given to him as a remembrance of his service with the Gaston County Police Department. Three, the service sidearm, Heckler and Koch Model 45, be permanently retired by the Gaston County Police Department and offered to the sergeant for a purchase price of $1. The Chief of the Gaston County Police Department is directed to award Sergeant Lowrance with the service sidearm and badge as specified and worn by him during his service to Gaston County in accordance with the North Carolina General Statutes and the policies of this board. Be it further resolved that the Gaston County Board of Commissioners ex express their sincere gratitude for his dedicated service of, of Police Sergeant Christopher B. Lawrence and wishes him the best in his retirement. And we will also adopt that at our voting meeting on the 27th. Congratulations, yeah, thank sir. You thank you so much. For your service. Well, I've told my wife I wasn't gonna say much and she said I had to say something. Um, Mr. Chairman and board members, it's been an honor to serve the, the citizens of Gaston County. I uh, told them during my interview uh, back in 1992 that if they hired me, I'd retire here. So I've uh, upheld my end of the deal. I um, hope everybody will join me on the internet. I'm doing a bicycle ride across the United States. I'm leaving May the 1st, and I'm going to raise awareness for law enforcement and first responder suicide rates. So thank you very much. Sergeant Lawrence, on behalf of the men and women of the Gaston County Police Department and certainly the citizens of Gaston County, I want to award you your badge. You already have your weapon. We've awarded that previously, but I also want to thank the family for uh, your commitment in allowing Chris uh, to serve with us for these many years. He served as canine officer and uh, obviously a sergeant uh, in the department as well as an ERT or emergency response team member for many, many years. And so he's a very dedicated employee and dedicated to the citizens, and we thank him for that. Thank you, thank you Chris. Chris, Chris, I just want to say thank you to you and also to your family. It means a lot. A lot, of, a lot of nights I got to see you up there taking care of uh, us and making sure we're safe. But uh, to your family, thank you for loaning him to us for 28 years, one month, and seven days. Sir. Seven days. <laughs> but uh, more so, from uh, this board and the county, we pray for you on your trip. I was, I was going to mention it, but you beat me to it. But uh, going to be bicycling across the whole country. That's pretty sweet. So be safe. Thank you, sir. Next up is Commissioner Tim Johnson, correct? Oh, okay, unable to attend, okay. Uh, we were gonna recognize the re uh, retirement of police record specialist, Deborah Preston, and uh, we will send that on to her. Up next, Mr. Brown, the retirement commendation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Would the family of Jeff L. Kaler please come up? Whereas, Master Police Officer Jeffrey L. Kaler retired from the Gaston County Police Department on January 1st, 2021, after serving 29 years with, with Gaston County. And whereas, Master Police Officer Jeffrey L. Kaler has requested that he be awarded his service sidearm, Hecker and Koch Model 45, and badge worn during his service with Gaston County. Police Department, uh, pursuant to General Statute 20-187-2, 
and board resolution number 259 dated October 27, 1983. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Gaston County Board of Commissioners that the badge worn by Officer Kaler during his service and his sidearm Model 45 be declared surplus equipment. The badge worn by Officer Kaler to be given to him as remembrance of his service with Gaston County, the service sidearm Heckler and Koch Model 45 to be permanently retired by the Gaston County Police Department and offered to Officer Kaler for the purchase price of $1. The Chief of the Gaston County Police is directed to award Officer Kaler with his service sidearm badge specifically worn by him during his service to Gaston County in accordance to North Carolina General Statute and policies of this board. Be it further resolved that the Gaston County Board of Commissioners expresses their sincerest gratitude and dedicated service to Master Police Officer Jeffrey L. Kaler and wishes him the best on his retirement. This to be adopted the 27th day of April 2021. Officer Kaler, thank you so much for your service and what you meant to this county and your family as much as anything for allowing us to have you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Brown. Uh, unlike Sergeant Lawrence, um, I will say a few words. Uh, what Sergeant Lawrence failed to mention was that when he interviewed with the county, I interviewed the same day. So uh, I think it's it's kind of cool that we interviewed the same day, hired the same day, and now we're here getting sent on our merry way the same day. Um, however, you know I I can't sit here and take a pat on the back because. Uh, I know that this is just another example of, of how very blessed I've been in my life. Um, first and foremost, I was blessed with a, a super upbringing. Um, my brother Robert Kaler and my sister Cindy Kaler are here with me, and they can attest that we had the, the best parents ever. Um, they taught us right from wrong and good from bad, and uh, I think I can accurately say that our Childhood is best described that we were at church or the church activity, school or a school activity, or we were on the ball field, period. And so it, you learn a lot of good lessons. You learn about your faith community. You learn about the importance of education and what it's like to be part of a team. It's not just about yourself. So um, a lot of children in our community don't have that advantage. And it seems like I would see that on an almost daily basis as an SRO and on patrol. And so I daily would realize how lucky I was or how lucky we were for our upbringing. Uh, Ted and Becky Kaler did a remarkable job. Uh, Ted Kaler passed in 1996, but um, our mom is still alive and going strong and she would be here tonight. But wouldn't you know it, she fell and broke her hip about a month ago. So she is watching the, the broadcast. So. Um, I hope the, the Wi-Fi is working well and she can see. But if you would join me in just giving her a round of applause, I think it would be in order. She's a retired school teacher. Thank you all for humoring me. I'm also very blessed with good health. Uh, a lot of folks know that, that I'm a cancer survivor. And in 1985, when I was first diagnosed, when I was in high school, uh, I was lucky enough to have a super staff at Presbyterian Hospital and at the Nall Clinic which is no longer there. Um, and in particular, an um, oncologist named Dr. Barry Galimbi, who uh, was the best. And it's my belief that God worked through Dr. Galimbi to get me back to health and to keep me healthy. And I would uh, be remiss if I didn't mention him tonight. And uh, lastly, I'm blessed to have a, a very supportive, uh, immediate, and extended family. My wife, Nan Kaler, come here, Nanny. Uh, she is here tonight. and. Uh, she is a Gaston County school teacher, uh, soon to be retired from Ida Rankin Elementary. And uh, our two daughters, Chloe and Bailey, uh, they both would be here, but they're off at college. So maybe they're watching. Uh, they are all remarkably supportive and patient when maybe dad hasn't had enough sleep. Um, so I want to recognize them. And then my extended family, which is at my church, at First Presbyterian Church in Mount Holly, uh, represented tonight by Reverend Janet DeWater and her husband John DeWater. Uh, thank them for being here also. Um, departmentally, uh, there are way too many people to thank at our police department between training officers and mentors and co-workers and supervisors. Uh, just to say thank you to the late Tom McCarthy for hiring me back when, when Phil Hindley was the county manager. 
And it's been a pleasure to work through all these different administrations uh, down to the current one. And uh, before I hush and let y'all move on, I want to say one word uh, to a group that uh, sometimes gets overlooked, and that's the, the officers at our townships, uh, because as a patrolman in the northeast corner of the county, very often my closest backup assistance would come from the Stanley Police Department or the Mount Holly Police Department, or depending on where I or my partners were, Cramerton or Lowell or Randlow or Dallas or Belmont. All the, the small townships play a vital role to those of us on the road, and it was always gratifying to be able to work as a team, uh, whether it was uh, not just the townships, but officers from the Sheriff's Department, state troopers, Lincoln County Sheriff's Department. Uh, that, I want to make sure that we mention them because sometimes they get overlooked when we're all here in our county uniforms. So, uh, Chief, I think I have talked enough. I've taken enough time for me and Sergeant Lawrence both. Your red light was flashing an hour ago. Oh, my bad. <laughs> so so in the parking lot, here. Jeff told me to just tell him good riddance when I got up here. So, <laughs> Jeff, it's my honor to present you with thank your you. badge and your weapon. Thank you. Again, I want to thank you and your family for your commitment to the county and the citizens of Gaston County. You were a vital part of our team. You heard him mention being an SRO. He was an SRO for many years, so he's impacted a lot of children through Ashbrook High School where he was an SRO and many other places throughout our community. So thank you for your service and enjoy retirement. Plenty of golf. I will. Thanks, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, before you get away, Somebody's talking. Before, you, before you get away, Jeff, I'd just like to congratulate you personally. Also, I've had the opportunity to interact with Jeff over the years, on both professionally and personally. You always carried yourself as a professional officer. You were a someone that was respected and looked up to and are today in, in our community. I appreciate that representation that you've brought from Gaston County. You've certainly been exemplary in, in representing our county and I'm, I congratulate you and your family and wish you well in retirement if I can ever help you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Back at the podium, Commissioner Brown, proclamation again. Y'all can come closer. Get paid more. <laughs> this is to proclaim April 11th through the 17th, 2021, Public Safety Telecommunications Week here in Gaston County, accepting as the Gaston County uh, Chief uh, Joseph Ramey. Whereas emergency emergencies in Gaston County can occur at any time that require law enforcement, fire, emergency medical services, and whereas Gaston County 911 telecommunication is the first and most critical contact that our citizens have with emergency services. And whereas as emergency occurs, the prompt response of Gaston County law enforcement officers, firefighters and paramedics is critical to the protection of life and preservation of property in Gaston County. And whereas the safety of our law enforcement officers, firefighters and paramedics is dependent upon the quality and accuracy of the information obtained from citizens who telephone Gaston County 911 telecommunicators centers. And whereas Gaston County, tele, Gaston County telecommunicators are the single vital link for our law enforcement officers, firefighters, paramedics by monitoring their activities by radio, providing to them information and ensuring their safety. And whereas Gaston County telecommunicators telecommunicators have exhibited compassion, understanding, professionalism during the performance of their job over the past year. And whereas in second full week of April has been set aside to recognize public safety telecommunications personnel and their critical role to protection of life and property in Gaston County. Now therefore be it resolved that the Gaston County Board of Commissioners proclaims April 11th through the 17th, 2021 as Public Safety Telecommunications Week, this to be adopted on the 27th day of April 2021. Chief? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners uh, for recognizing our 911 telecommunicators in the proclamation. It mentioned being vital to police, fire, and medic, but 
More importantly, they're vital to our citizens as they're the first contact. Uh, when someone's having an emergency or an emergency situation, uh, they direct them to the help that they need and get the help uh, that citizens so deserve. And uh, they do a phenomenal job. The national standard for answering 911 calls is uh, in under 10 seconds, 90% of the time, proud to tell you that uh, this past year we were at 95% in under 10 seconds, 90% you know, of the time. And so uh, very proud of that. I do want to do something a little different tonight. I want to recognize some individual telecommunicators, although they're not here, but by name, for some events that they've done in the past year uh, for uh, basically assisting with the birth of a child over 911. Amanda Owens in September of 2019. The rest of these for providing CPR instructions uh, over the phone that saved someone's life. Uh, so uh, that tells you how important they are to uh, public safety and the citizens of Gaston County. These following individuals saved someone's life by providing CPR. Sarah Dover, Alexia Pierce, Autumn Quill, Jessica Morris, J.D. Whitaker, Kayla Kaiser, Samantha Redwine, and Sarah Dover. Dover. And of course, uh, all of them are a vital part of the public safety team, and we appreciate they work, the work that they do day in and day out. And thank you for recognizing them uh, this Telecommunicators Week. Thank you so much. Thank you. Commissioner Brown, proclamation to proclaim the month of April as Child Abuse Prevention Month in Gaston County. Which one was that? I'm sorry. Uh, child abuse. Child abuse. Sorry. Misty and Miss Heather, if y'all come on up and some more people from the Lighthouse Services. Come closer. Get paid more. All right. Whereas child abuse and neglect is a serious problem affecting every aspect of our community and finding, solution, finding solutions requires input and action from everyone and whereas all children have the right to grow up in a safe, stable, and nurturing environment, free from abuse and neglect, whereas children are the key to our community's future success, prosperity, and enriched quality of life. And while children are our most valuable resource, they are also our most vulnerable. And whereas a majority of child abuse cases arise from situations and conditions that are preventable in the engaged, aware, supportive community, and whereas child abuse can have long-term psychological, emotional, and physical effects that have long-lasting consequences for its victims. And whereas communities that provide parents with social support, knowledge of parenting, and child development, and concrete solutions of resources needed to cope with the stress and nurture their children, and helping to ensure that all children grow to their full potential. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Gaston County Board of Commissioners proclaims the month of April 2021 as Child Abuse Prevention Month and calls upon all the citizens and community agencies, faith group, medical facilities, elected leaders, and businesses to increase their participation and effort in supporting families, thereby strengthening the community in which we live, this to be adopted the 27th day of April. Ladies who would like to speak or come talk any way you want. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you. I think a couple of us may speak, but um, I'm Heather Kaufman with the Lighthouse Children's Advocacy Center, and thank you to the board for this proclamation, as well as to our citizens who are devoted to community education and learning um, simple tasks they can do for child abuse prevention. Um, thank you to our partners in child welfare, law enforcement, and all of the agencies that we work with to um, work on child abuse cases and increase education for prevention. And a special thanks to those county agencies who have allowed us to um, do our blue um, pinwheel campaign this year um, to try to highlight Child Abuse Prevention Month. We know that April is when we recognize this, but child abuse prevention is something that we're focused on year round. Um, and now I believe Patricia Massey with um, Child Welfare is gonna say a few words. <laughs> Thank you on behalf of Child and Family Services. The activities held during Child Abuse Awareness Month are scheduled to raise awareness about the problem of child abuse and most importantly about what each of us can do to prevent child abuse and uh, child abuse and neglect. This has been especially challenging during the COVID pandemic. However, it remains our mission to ensure that child 
maltreatment prevention is our priority in our community. Through col collaboration with our partners, we're able to build connections, supportive environments, positive experiences for our children. We continue to work diligently to support families, protect children, and promote a positive and healthy community for our children. Thank you again. Thank you, Thank you Mindy. Mr. Brown, your fourth proclamation to proclaim April as Public Health Month. I'd like to make a resolution. We only do one <laughs> per Miss Abigail Newton and all of the DSS or uh, Department of Health and Human Services workers. There he is, Steve. How are you? Good. I want to tell you guys that we have been blessed to have Steve and his staff to do the things they have done over this COVID. So thank you. Thank you to all your staff, and uh, I mean that because they call you guys, and it, I mean, we're not experts, you guys are, so thank you so much. But this is to proclaim April 2021 as Public Health Month here in Gaston County. Whereas, Gaston County cannot thrive if the public health is not sound. And whereas, public health professionals help communities prevent, prepare for withstanding and recovery from the impact of a full range of health threats including disease outbreaks such as COVID-19, pandemic, measles, natural disasters, and disasters caused by human activity. Whereas the Health Department of the Health and Human Services work to prevent, to spread the disease, and understanding the root causes of poor health and health disparities to remove barriers from good health and gas and county residents. And whereas the Department of Health and Human Services works alongside elected officials, community leaders, planners, and boards, and commissions to develop influential policies and protocols to protect public's health. And whereas the Department of Health and Human Services public health staff have worked tirelessly over the past year for the COVID-19 pandemic to provide surveillance, contact tracing, outbreak investigations, community education, and critical vaccinations to the community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Gaston County Board of Commissioners hereby proclaims the month of April 2021 is Public Health Month. And Gaston County urges its citizens to renew the efforts to make commitment to both personal health, community wealth, and while recognizing the Gaston County Health, Depart health and Human Services does prevent, protect, and provide a healthier community, this to be adopted on the 27th day of April 2021. And I could not ask, I mean, this has been a heck of a year. And uh, so thank you to your staff. Thank you to the citizens of Gaston County for what they've had to uh, put up with and endure. But uh, I don't know what you want to do. I'm going to give that to you let you roll. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Brown and Chairman Keeger, Board of Commissioners, and Dr. Eagle. Um, I want to thank you all for taking this time to recognize Gaston County's public health professionals in recognition of public, National Public Health Week. Um, the time to do so in the midst of a global pandemic only seems appropriate. Um, I want to thank you all for your continued support, um, not just over this past year, but in all previous years, um, for supporting us both through these challenges and through these opportunities uh, that we've been presented to care for our great community. Uh, over the last year, we've seen the power, importance, and resiliency of public health, both through our staff, but also through our community as well, that, as Commissioner Brown pointed out. The folks behind me, represent um, just a few of the many great public health professionals that I'm blessed to work beside each and every day. They work every day to improve the health and well-being of our county and our community, both before the pandemic and will continue to do so after the pandemic. I wish the entire department could be here tonight uh, to take a little moment in the spotlight and take a little bow uh, for all their hard work, particularly over this last year. I know you'll join me in describing uh, your Gaston County Public Health team is passionate, compassionate, creative, resilient, and dedicated. We certainly could not do it without the support of our local health care providers and professionals at Caremont and, and at the various practices, as well as the faith community, but also the many silent citizens who work to advance the health of our community each and every day. Again, we thank you for this recognition, and we're encouraged by the progress that we're seeing during this pandemic and where we are now, as we begin to see that bright light in front of us and it's getting closer each and every day. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Mr. Brown. And I would like to add, while you're all collecting your property to get out of here, uh, it, it's been amazing the work that our health department has been able to do. You, I, I can't tell you how many compliments that I've received throughout the whole county, the community, outside the community. I've had people uh, call me that live outside Gaston County who have relatives here and they felt obligated to give me a call just to tell what a great job we're doing. And uh, I just can't say it enough times, but thank you so very, very much. Okay, now you can get out of here. <laughs> All right, next up is citizen recognition. A portion of our meeting is set aside for the purpose of allowing citizens an opportunity to offer comments and suggestions. This comment period is not intended to require the commissioner staff to answer questions. Questions requiring a response shall be answered as soon as possible through the county manager's office. Uh, speakers will be limited to three minutes. As I call your name, please step to the podium, announce your name and address. And the first speaker tonight is uh, Lydia McCaskill. Good evening, Ms. McCaskill. My name is Lydia. I'm a resident of Gastonia. Um, so April is public health month and we recognize COVID, but none of the commissioners have on a mask. That's funny. And the head of the DHSS resigned after y'all failed to recognize health disparities for your black constituents. Okay. Anyway, I see that since the last time I was here and demanded the full five minutes for my citizens' remarks, you have since changed the time. That is so cute. Yet another way to silence the citizens or the black citizens. Well, hello, Chad. I promise I am going to expose you. This semester is almost over and I will have more time, so hold your horses, wait your time. Not today. Oh, Tracy isn't here. That makes me sad. Especially since I've heard from many citizens that Tracy wants to know if the Black Panthers are in Gastonia. And I know that, Tracy, you're sitting at home watching. Oh, you scared of the Panthers? Upset that the people are doing homeless outreach? community outreach, educating our children, and feeding the community? Well, the answer is simply yes. We are here. I am the general of the original Black Panthers of Gastonia, and we vow to continue doing work for our community despite and in spite of the white supremacist smear campaign that Tracy Philbeck is on. Now, I find it to be a slap in the face that the first proclamation on your agenda is for animal care. Now, as much as I love my animals, it is disgusting to know not one of you commissioners, despite of the six-page proposal, has recognized making racism a public health crisis in Gaston County and joined the neighboring cities, towns, and now, guess what, the United States CDC. It doesn't surprise me, though, due to your failure to do what the citizens has asked for and incompetence when it comes to the racist statue that sits right outside this courthouse, which is presumed to be fair and impartial. There was a 7 to 5 vote for the Council of Understanding. Three pastors told y'all to move it. Also, if you didn't know, on July 6, 2020, a federal judge blocked a Graham ordinance requiring protesters to obtain a permit from the chief of police at least 24 hours before any planned event under the basis that it was unconstitutional, okay? The fact that y'all don't even do research before you apply unconstitutional orders shows your grave incompetence. We do not adhere to your unconstitutional order. It's simple. If you sick your police buddies to arrest us while we peacefully protest, not only will we sue you for violating our First Amendment right under the color of law clause, look it up if you don't know what it is, but this county will yet again be a mockery to North Carolina and to this nation. Get out of your Jim Crow ways and do right by the citizens, not just the citizens that sit on this board, which are white citizens, but as black citizens. If you want to know the Panthers are here, we feed the homeless. Did y'all know that? Did Tracy tell you that? Did he tell you that we're starting education programs in our community? Did he tell you that we clean up our community? Or did he just come to you and say, there are Black Panthers here. We are here and we are not going anywhere. We have not caused you any problems. And if you know what's best, you should work with us instead of against us. Because every meeting I will be here to expose you all. Your time is up. Thank, Thank you. you.
Next up is Daryl Farmer. Good evening. Good evening. Power to the people. Let me take this off. Yeah. <clears throat> My name is King Rick. I am the leader of the original Black Panthers across America and internationally. I travel across the globe fighting against racism, oppression, injustice, inequality, and police brutality. And it was just a matter of time before I showed up in Gaston County and Gastonia. We're here to put you on notice. The systemic racism that seems to be permeating in this county and in this state, we're going to challenge it. And I have an issue where I don't see any people of color on this commission. I got an issue with that. I usually don't come in here nice, but I'm coming in here nice today to put you all on notice. The systemic racism, the oppression, the injustice, the inequality, the police brutality that's running rampant in this city, in this county, and in this state will be challenged. We're here to let you know that. The disrespect that some of you members have given to the people in this community, intolerable and unacceptable. We will come back, we will disturb, we will disrupt, and we'll put you on notice. If there's no justice, you shall have no peace. And I don't mean that with violence. I mean that with reality. As you know, the situations that just occurred across the country, and especially in Minnesota, it's a shame. It's hurtful. And you all have an opportunity to change the dynamics of the city. But you're sitting on your laurels, allowing white supremacy to run rampant. But I'm here to tell you, you're asking if the original Black Panthers are here. We are here, and we aren't going anywhere. We are not a racist group. We are not a hate group. Study your history. We are against racism. We are against oppression. We are against injustice. And we are against police brutality. And you should be, too. We are one. I'm not a speech maker. I'm an action taker. Power to the people. Power, Power to, to the, the people. people. We out. Let's go. Sierra Hall is up next. Um, good evening, guys. My name is Sierra Hall. I'm a Gaston County resident. Um, tonight, I really do not have much to say at all. I just wanted to be here to continue to remind you guys that we are waiting for the resolution um, for the racist monument outside to be removed. Um, we're patiently waiting. Also, while I am up here, I would like to take a moment of silence for Deontay Wright and the family in George Floyd. Um, the things that's going on across the nation is absolutely disgusting right now. I don't think that any person of color or any black person truly knows how to feel right now because of what we are able to see visually with our eyes every day. Um, it's disgusting, so I would ask that each one of you take a moment, take tonight, um, to watch both of those if you haven't, and to understand um, how we feel and why um, this monument outside is so very, very important. You don't see, it's just a lot of things that you don't see, but every, thing, every day that we turn on the TV, we continue to see white people, white cops killing African Americans, and it's not okay. Um, thank you for your time. I ask that you guys think about that resolution because we need that monument gone and we're not going to go away. We're going to continue to come here um, as we have been already. Thank you guys for your time and y'all have a great evening. Good evening. Uh, Paul Bonham is our last speaker. Good evening, Mr. Bonham. Thank you, Honorable Chairman, Commissioners. I appreciate you and I'll just divert slightly after the disrespect that was shown by the previous people. I'm embarrassed by that, and I apologize for that. You all deserve respect. I'm grateful to live in this county. The police officers who serve here, the police women, are incredible. They do a good job. They consistently work tirelessly. I'm a landlord. I own numerous properties in this county. I bought the Dennis Taylor estate on the south side of Gastonia last year. I poured over a half million dollars into that area to rid it of drugs and crime. And those things know no race. It's every race, creed, and color is affected by methamphetamines and the kind of drugs that's in this county. And the police officers, men and women, put their lives on the line to deal with it. And we landlords putting our lives on the line. I had to pepper spray somebody just two weeks ago trying to get squatters out of that area. 
The area of concern that I have with the statue is pretty brief. If we take that statue down, I will personally fund a statue of a cross there. And I will be happy to put it there in its Ms. place. Ms. Hall, Ms. Hall, Ms. Hall. Was you helping those people when they let these people get you? Ms. Hall, nobody disrespected you when I've you were at the podium. Would you please well, when do they the come same? Well, they need to come in here with facts. You ma'am, ma'am, you are out of order. Anywhere to say, you come in here oh. and you respect people and talk about disrespect? No, sir. I provided housing for dozens of people of every race, creed, and color, and will continue to do so as long as this county allows me to do that. My concern specifically tonight, I had the privilege of speaking with Utility Supervisor Ms. Garman regarding the area of utility theft. We've got a real problem with people taking meters, placing them in from one house to another, and then who knows who did it, and the landlords end up having to pay to get it, the utility tampering fees off. I came with a couple answers. We've got the first offense of that is a misdemeanor. The second offense is a felony. Unfortunately, our court system is very overburdened. Um, sometimes police are not able to come to court to help prosecute those cases. And then in many cases, it's simply pay the fine and then it's sort of dismissed. If we could keep good records of that, that second offense being a felony might be a strong deterrence against that kind of utility theft which is plaguing our area. Ms. Garman indicated that it was, quote, rampant and substantial, rampant and substantial. I myself have paid two utility tampering fees just in the last three weeks, and I can assure you I did not tamper with those meters, but to help my tenants get their utilities on, I had to pay those fines and get the, get the, uh, the charge off. If we can have the police able to come regularly and maybe keep the uh, offense, not just merely pay a fine and then let it go, and then have that second offense be a felony with some teeth, I think we could provide a lot of deterrence. Ms. Garman indicated there was quite a good uh, detection program that could be installed on some of the meters. I would help to pay for that as well myself, and I will help to sponsor a reward program to turn in offenders as well. I'm coming with answers. I'm not uh, money bags by any stretch, but I feel like it would be better to put money forward to make solutions rather than to try to come after the fact uh, and, and try to fix what's already broken. So again, I appreciate your time. You've been very gracious. Again, my apologies for other folks who came and did not show you that respect. It's a joy to be a part of Gaston County. For all of, all of us here, I believe, share that opinion, at least all of us in the room currently. And if there's a point person that I could go to to begin to, to put some of these reward programs or other steps that I've mentioned into place, I would be glad to submit my efforts to Mr. Keeger or whoever you would direct me to work with, with the utility department, the court system, to come up with some answers to make it where our problem is no longer rampant and substantial. And thank you again for your time and courtesy. Mr. Sir, Chair. if you would, leave your uh, contact information with Ms. Buff, the clerk, and uh, staff will be... Uh, responding to you. You're very kind, sir. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if we could maybe just have staff forward that to the city. I think that's who he was directing that toward. But your property is in the county, isn't it? Yes, sir. I own yeah. numerous houses inside the city limits as well as in the county. Right. So about 30 properties, give or take, sir. And have you contacted the city? Uh, the city, the, the city, the utility department, yes, the utility department. Okay, we can't really interfere with the city's doings, but staff will get back to you some way, shape, or form shortly. You're very kind, sir. All right, uh, just just to uh, slow the pace down a tiny bit, uh, I'd like to bless you. I'd like to uh, see if anybody had any other matters before we get to the presentation coming up next. If not, we will move ahead. Mr. Mumford, he, he's here representing the Gas and Business Association and is going to give us a update on current affairs. Yes, uh, I'd like to start just as a recovering elected official i appreciate your your time you spend behind the dais and and uh just the openness to listen to everybody's perspective i really do appreciate that if you feel more comfortable removing your mask while you speak feel free thank you that is better uh well chairman keeger and commissioners dr eagle thank you for the opportunity to be here today as most of you know uh the gaston chamber and the Greater Gaston Development Corporation merged. That was effective January 1st. A lot has taken place since then, and I'm here to give you a, a quick update of our activities. Let's see. 
So the presentation, this will be relatively quick. Uh, the presentation tonight is, is going to give an overview of the due diligence efforts that we had that led to the formation of the, the GBA. I think it's important to bring that context to the conversation. I'll also talk a bit about our organizational structure, a summary of our strategic planning process, and then finally, a review of our strategic plan components and I think most importantly, how those line up with where you all are headed strategically. And that's been a very intentional effort. So as most of you know, because most of you were on this, this board two years ago, you all played an instrumental role in leading the effort to begin to figure out how best to support economic development in this community. And that is not lost on our organization. We were, we were at the table as well and took to heart all of the comments that came out of those conversations. So the, the committee of, that was called the Gaston Economic Development Strategy Committee was an outcome of your leadership and asking the really powerful question, how might we collectively shift Gaston's economic position in the region? And I'm a firm believer in questions are often stronger than answers. So you opened up the opportunity for really strong dialogue. A key outcome of the report that came from Ted Abernathy, which was subsequent to that uh, committee I referenced, a key outcome was the identification of the need for a unified approach to economic development and resource utilization throughout the county. He, I know he was in front of you um, a year ago, to, to state there are a lot of organizations well-intentioned in the county doing their best to support economic development and economic prosperity, but they just weren't together, and there was a better way he felt to do that. Important also was the fact that economic development is really a, a comprehensive notion. So it's inclusive of, of large-scale industrial projects, uh, small-scale, small business support, economic mobility and prosperity, and then overall quality of life. All of those components really play into a definition of economic development. So as I mentioned, uh, much like your approach to, to asking a powerful question, we began to look at how we could do things differently in the future as an organization to support the economy of Gaston County. In our early due diligence work was driven by exploratory questions that really got to the heart of understanding economic challenges and opportunities facing Gaston County, especially in this post-COVID environment. And the opportunities, you all know this better than I, the opportunities are, are rampant. Gaston County has been found by not only to the east, to Charlotte, but to the west. And so we need to be thoughtful and planful on how we prepare for this growth that is coming. We also want to understand and determine our appropriate role as an organization within this countywide approach. We wanted to identify and enhance partnerships, which is critical, to eliminate any overlap or redundancy, and to make sure that we effectively maximize limited resources. And then lastly, wanted to support the diverse of, diversity of businesses, large businesses and small businesses throughout this county. So the answers to those questions and the, uh, from the previous slide and uh, the Abernathy recommendations led to the development of an intentional guiding, list of intentional guiding statements for our organization. So our purpose for being is to foster a prosperous and inclusive economy in Gaston County. We measure all of our activity toward that. If it doesn't get to that outcome, then we're not gonna do that, that activity. We also acknowledge and appreciate that we're not the only ones doing this work. We do, however, want to be a driver in this activity so that we can transform Gaston County into a regional leader. If you remember in the Aber Abernathy Report and even before that in the GEDSC, Gaston County was at the bottom quartile of every measure of economics you could think of compared to surrounding counties. That should not be the case. We want to be a part of the effort to, to flip that. And finally, we commit to accomplishing this work in a collaborative manner. We cannot go it alone. That just does not work anymore. 
So to guide this, this effort, uh, a select group of experienced leaders, most of whom you probably know on the screen, they were asked to serve uh, on our inaugural board for the GBA. All the members you see there were seated January 1st. By design, this is a small board of 15 people. They're a fully engaged board, and we wanted that to be the case. Many of you have you probably been involved in boards where there are executive committees and a lot of other board members, and the executive committee does the work. We want to make sure that everybody here has skin in the game, and that's, that's the case. We've been extremely pleased by the level of commitment, engagement, and strategic thinking that these individuals have brought to this effort. Could you go back to the list real quick? Yes, sir. Uh, this is something that gets overlooked from time to time, and, and, and I'm not pointing any fingers or anything, but uh, often so many county committees are overloaded with people from Gastonia. And, you know, I just wanted to throw that out there, maybe down the road, maybe diversify it just a little more as far as uh, the townships and things like that. Yes, sir. That, that is a great point. We actually spent a lot of time discussing that in the original formation of this group. Okay. Diversity on several different levels. Uh, one of the challenges we had, we had a large board of 30 from the chamber and a board of 30 from the GGDC. So what you see reflected there are some members of both of those legacy organizations, some who served on both, and then some brand new members to begin to diversify it. But it's, it's a, a point well taken. Yes, Thank sir. You. So I do want to spend just a, a bit of time here talking about the, the considerations around strategic planning and how we approach that. I think that's important. Uh, the board's approach to this work was grounded in several different principles that you see listed. So we believe that utilizing a strategic plan is a deliberate effort to inform fundamental decisions which end up shaping and guiding our organization. It's our roadmap for how to be successful. We believe strategic resource alignment is critical. Uh, there's, there's not enough money to go around or people to go around, so how do we use all of those wisely? We believe past practices and accomplishments should not necessarily dictate future actions. That means that just because it worked yesterday doesn't mean it works tomorrow. We want to test those things. And then lastly, the strategic plan should be comprehensive and should always be forward-looking. We're not looking back. We're looking at what could be in the future. So we created a framework uh, based on these principles and our purpose, vision, and mission statements, as well as through input from various business and community leaders throughout the county. The framework identifies these five strategic priorities that you see, four of which are outward facing. The last one is more about our own operations and how we can uh, operate in an excellent fashion. So through direct board engagement and leadership, we built out the framework into a strategic plan that identifies objectives for each of these five priorities that you see listed. Each, each of these priorities was led by a task force. Each task force was co-chaired by two board members. So we have five executive committee members, 10 other board members, those other 10 own parts of this strategy. They're, they're uh, engaged very deeply in the work. And then we rounded out the task forces with about five or six other people from the community. And I want to thank Dr. Eagle uh, because the county was represented heavily in participation in these conversations. And we really do appreciate that. The structural benefit, we think, uh, in this is that our priorities that we've listed align nicely with the priorities that are being discussed by the county. So your goals and outcomes match our broad goals and outcomes. How we go about that will be different, but the beauty of this is that there's real close alignment to these things. And I do want to mention that our board approved this strategy just last week. Again, we've only been around for three months, so a lot of work has gone into this. I do want to spend just a few minutes now and talk about these four outward facing um, strategic priorities. So the first one we call influencing the business environment. This task force is led by Joel Long of GSM Services and Jim Morasso of Web Custom Kitchen. And the purpose is to identify, or to unify, sorry, the collective voice of business in Gaston County. That's easier said than done, 
But we want to make sure that we understand from a business perspective what is important, how do we get to the heart of that, and then how can we represent that voice locally at the state level and at the federal level. Donnie Hicks played a key role in this. He serves on that task force. We appreciate his participation. So the work with this area starts with strengthening government relations um, and that activity at all levels. And this is actually a great example of that, just coming and talking to you about what we're doing, how we have partnered along the way, and where we see the future with the two organizations. The priority and related objectives, so you see two objectives here, uh, they align nicely with the county's strategic objective to support land development and planning programs. And just an example of what I mean by that, um, I know on the staff side you can't go advocate for those things. We can be that voice to advocate in support of infrastructure investments, which is so critical to the future of Gaston County. The second strategic priority is around promoting business success. Um, this task force is led by Dara Hartman of Sharp Business Systems and Carrie Massey of Holy Angels. And the purpose here is to identify and meet needs of business. Sounds simple. Uh, think of this more as sort of a traditional area that the chamber used to focus around programs and services. Uh, Richard Randall from the EDC serves on this task force. And this really starts with understanding the need of business. I spoke to this of let's not just do what we've done before. We are, we're a member organization. Uh, membership costs money. We want to provide value for those dollars that people give us. To provide value, we need to understand what does that mean to business. So we're going to do a deep dive into that to understand that. And that's where, that's where our work starts. Also, we have a focus on underrepresented businesses here in this community. And that could be minority businesses, women-owned businesses, and another group, sort of a subset, which is smaller downtown merchants uh, that often get lost in the big talk of economic development. We want to make sure we understand their needs. And this relates to the county's strategic objective of improving access and services for a diverse community. Um, you would think that we were so smart that we lined all these up months ago, but this just sort of happened that these line up, which is, which is great. The third item is around enhancing workforce capacity. We've talked about workforce capacity in this community for a long time. A lot of great work has gone into that and we now are looking at a robust structure to align those activities that can really sustain programs and connect education and learning and training here in Gaston County to job opportunities and more importantly career opportunities here in the county. So we stated that as a way to retain homegrown talent. Uh, it's important, um, I know when I, when I served on the, the Charlotte City Council, I used to say I'd, I was trying to help prepare the community so that our children, two boys who were then in third grade, second, third grade, would come back to Charlotte. And they did that. And there is nothing better, uh, at least for me, we love our boys. Some people may argue that, don't want their children, but we did, uh, that they came back because there was opportunity. And Gaston County is ripe for that as well. We think that's critically important. And it's a unique place for our organization. We're not competing with anybody else. Uh, Angie Karchmer with the Workforce Development Board has served on this, this task force and has been extremely helpful. And then lastly, I'm going to talk about driving economic diversification. So Donnie and his team at the EDC do fabulous work. He is, he's the best. I mean, best not only in the state, but the southeast regionally. He's phenomenal at the work he does. Um, what we want to make sure we do is enhance that work, support that work, and then see what else is there in this comprehensive notion of economic development. And you may have read this, uh, remote work. So some cities are actually building up a marketing campaign to attract remote workers. Think about a CFO for a company in New York City. That person and their family want to get in, out of New York City, so they're going to choose a place, and quality of life is important. They need to have connectivity. That's broadband connectivity, connectivity with an airport to get back to the home office. We are so well positioned to market this community as a place of remote workers, so it's a different concept than economic development with capital investment. We're bringing people with disposable income that then use those funds throughout the community. We have 13 municipalities. People can choose where they want to go. It all accrues to the benefit of the county. We're excited about 
that opportunity. Uh, Matt Blackwell has helped guide that conversation on the task force, and we appreciate his support. And this aligns directly with the objective of the county to grow and diversify the economy. So lastly is just a quick update. Um, we, we have objectives, we have priorities, we do not yet have specific actions and measures. That's the next step. Uh, the beauty of this structure, in my opinion, is we can now reach out to the community, engage a lot more people into the conversation of what this sh should look like, what should success look like. So we're excited about that next step. And then we want to deepen partnerships. I've, I've mentioned we've, we've had great partnership with the county, travel and tourism, the EDC, and others, and we look forward to continuing that. In fact, we have a meeting tomorrow with uh, travel and tourism. I thought I saw Mike here somewhere earlier. Oh, there he is. S Thursday, sorry, Thursday, that's right, Thursday, yeah. Just making sure you're paying attention over there, yeah. Um, so thank you again for your leadership, and I, I truly mean that. We would not be here today, our merger would not have occurred had you all not come together and asked that powerful question of how might we do this differently. And we, we took that to heart. We've come up with what I think is a very robust plan of attack on this and work in concert with the county. And I do want to make sure that I, I take a moment, there were a lot of recognitions uh, earlier in this meeting, and I want to recognize my seven GBA colleagues who have worked tirelessly over the last several months to make sure that this organization um, is seen in the proper light, that we're professional and we're providing impact that we want to do. And they've just, I, I could not be more proud of a group of people than I am of them. So if they're watching, thank you all. You know who you are. Um, and lastly, I just, uh, I want to say I'm excited about the future. It, it, is, it is really amazing. Um, John, Dr. John Hooser, who's one of the co-chairs for our workforce task force, he said in his 30 years of doing this work with education in the context of economic development, he has never seen a collaborative mindset to the degree he's seeing here in Gaston County. And I can feel it. And I greatly appreciate it because I can tell you that's not the norm everywhere. Uh, and it's powerful. And we're excited to be a part of that. We want to play an appropriate role and look forward to working with you. So I'd be glad to answer any questions or concerns that you might have. And thank you again for your time. Questions or comments? I know I'll be looking forward to seeing some of these actual action plans. I can't wait for them to. Uh, Come full circle. It's been a long time waiting. It it has. I I agree. And uh, it just it it takes time to prepare to do the work. And so I, I appreciate the patience of everybody to allow us to be thoughtful, and intentional to to build this fundamental organization that can now go out and do great work. All right. Well, thank you for coming out this evening, and good luck. You're very welcome. Thank you. Uh, Next item would be the county manager's report and or update. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to echo before I jump into this material, the comments that, that Patrick made concerning collaboration. Um, it is unique um, and to be appreciated. The, the mindset that we see in Gaston County between um, organizations like the association, the hospital system and the local governments is extremely important to our success. So I wanted to echo that. So tonight my update is on the strategic planning work that we've been doing at a staff level for several months. Before I get into the piece of paper that I left at your seat, I need to do some thank yous because there's been a tremendous amount of work ongoing in the organization for months. So I'm going to ask some folks that are sitting in the audience to stand. Um, this is the core team. This is the group of folks um, that I asked to come together to put some, some hard work into a strategic plan. And you all started this conversation, before I asked them to stand, you all actually started this conversation in earnest in November of 2019, which in many ways seems like 10 years ago because we've had a pandemic um, since then. Um, however, I will say we took what you provided at your retreat at the Botanical Garden um, and we've built on that and we've, we've uh, connected some dots and we have um, a plan that is taking, um, taking shape. 
So before I jump into some of the specifics, I would like to ask the core team that's been working on this to stand, and I will recognize those folks. Um, stand up, folks, please. <laughs> um, so these are the members that are present. Let me acknowledge them and also um, the, the members that are not present. But David Williams has been leading this group um, along with Gina Shell, um, who is one of our, our part-time folks um, that helps us with project management. She is not here tonight. Uh, we also have Michael Applegate from Travel and Tourism, Pearl Burris Floyd um, with uh, Diversity, and Equity, and Inclusion. Um, Ricky Johnson is not with us tonight from Information Technology. Wilson Limley, he is our Process Improvement and Strategy Manager out of the Budget Office. Um, Paul Ward, from the library uh, is not with us, but he also served, and um, Justin Amos um, out of the budget office as well. So I really wanted to take a few moments and thank these folks um, in, in public because um, they've put up with me asking questions, and, and over the course of my 25-year career, this has been the, the type of work that I have spent the most time on and that I enjoy the most. So um, I hope that I've empowered them to say, leave us alone and let, our do our, let us do our work. Um, but I get really excited about strategic planning. So they have put up with me and done some amazing work over the course of the last six to eight months. So I wanted to thank them. Thank you, guys. So with that being said, um, we took, the team took, um, some existing information. So you will probably remember that since 2013, the board has had a set of adopted priorities. And I've listed those for you about midway down on the page. In addition to that, we took what you told us um, at your retreat, um, and, and we really labeled those from your discussion as guiding philosophies, because those are not priority areas, but they are very much a philosophy around how the county will approach the work. In addition to that, when I started in this role, um, I shared some key priorities um, that I thought were important at an organizational level, so that's been um, some contextual framework as well. Um, and then this team went out and um, utilized an advisory team and our department directors and, and garnered input from across the organization to start to build um, a strategic plan. And at the heart of this work, the reason that we've gone down this road is, is, is relatively simple. We have to have a mechanism in county government to assure that what, what the organization is doing every day is supporting your priorities, aligning with your priorities, and we have to have information to be able to make decisions and make adjustments if we find that we're not operating the organization in a way that fully supports your priorities as a board. That is why we're doing this work. Back in January, I shared some information with you all around mission and vision. Um, we have simplified the, the mission for the organization. You can see those listed there. Um, we had some email dialogue about those in terms of um, my floating some, uh, some narrative and, and you guys um, sending me some feedback. We really wanted a mission statement for the organization that um, everyone could remember that was simple, that's aspirational. Um, you can see that listed there, providing excellent public service every day. That's clear, that's to the point. Um, and then the vision expands on that and, and talks about what we want to be as an organization. If you flip over to the back side, we also had some conversation at that point in time about core values. Um, we could not find in the archives um, any recording of core values for the organization in the past. Um, so we spent some time getting feedback from lots of folks across the organization and really put some thought into what are our values and how do we do the work every day. So you can see those listed there. Um, it, and they, they very much align with your guiding philosophies that came out of our retreat. Um, so lastly, um, w the, the team took the, the 13 priorities um, and your input from the retreat, um, the input that you gave us during the budget process, and, and developed um, at the end of the day um, some refined uh, strategic focus areas. You can see that they're not dramatically different from the 2013 priorities. They're just more, um, um, more targeted and um, 
I've provided uh, some, some, some text there for you at the bottom of the back page. So my goal for tonight was to get this information in front of you, have a very general conversation, and then allow time for feedback and additional discussion. Um, what I would like to do then is bring back for your consideration at your next business meeting uh, a resolution um, adopting those key focus areas that I can then take as your manager and utilize uh, to um, implement a strategic plan for the organization. Now the strategic plan will um, of course be provided to you ahead of time, but it will include very quantifiable measures in each of the focus areas. So we will have set goals that we can track over the course of the year to determine if we're making progress or not. And if not, uh, we'll report that to you and then we'll make adjustments to determine best path forward. Of course, we'll also report where we're having success, but it really does give the organization a way to track progress, have metrics that have a timeline associated with them that connect back to your priorities. So um, with, with that being said, um, I would like to leave this with you. Of course, take any questions you have tonight, but then bring back to you um, that approval, if you will, of this direction at your next business meeting. You're, you're talking about the 27th? Yes, sir. Any questions? All right, thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Since I did not hear anybody speak up about other matters, I'll ask once again. Uh, thank you again, Patrick, for coming out. Uh, thank you for the staff, uh, I, I guess, going beyond the regular call of duty. You were all hired to do specific jobs, but you're collaborating now on the, on the, for the betterment of the whole county, and we thank you for that. This concludes our work session for tonight. Our next meeting is Tuesday, April 27th at 6 p.m. right here in the Harley B. Gaston Public Forum. Thank you for watching.